Scotch four, three, two, we're, one dummy. We're, we're making it through the evening anyway. We are. That was our plan for tonight. Uh, so Andrew's in charge of all of our uh, technical mm. stuff. Audio uh, visual guru. Yeah, we may be we may be chopping a little bit here, guys. We're we're working through it. Give us a second. Keep talk, talking. Talk about yourselves. Yeah. Drew is not here to help us with this, so we'll uh, we'll do the best we can with what we've got. Yep. Uh, so, while Andrew's doing that, uh, let's, let's start our show with a disclaimer about our, our video that was released this week. So, we have, yeah, yeah. we have two Glenmuras that, uh, we are doing. Glenmura. We've got the Sherry Cask finish, which is the one that we actually reviewed. <laughs> and we have the 15 year old which is the one that Drew thought we did uh, so even though it I, I think he changed the thumbnail now didn't he I, I didn't get a chance to look today but anyway Drew was supposed to change the thumbnail on it uh, but this is actually the one we reviewed the review is on this bottle we didn't think that it was this bottle we thought it was this one so the price, everything we talked about, referred to that one. We will get to the 15. Uh, actually, we're getting to the 15 probably Pretty very soon. soon. Yeah. Um, so, but we wanted you guys to know that we knew what we were drinking. Uh, Drew just, everybody makes mistakes, even <laughs> Drew. And considering how many videos we've released, and Drew is pretty meticulous about all that kind of stuff, that one just kind of slipped through the cracks, I, I think. I call that a good uh, record. Yeah, so, you know, he felt a little bit sheepish about it, I think, but uh, I told him not to worry about it because it's fine. It is what it is. But anyway, we wanted everybody to know that we knew what we were drinking. Sometimes we don't, but uh, in this case, we, we actually knew what was going on. Yep. So, get your uh, your stream figured out. We good? Well, I don't know. I think so. So, uh, so I, I was running late today because I was trying to get rid of some bees from my backyard. So, I get back here like in the good way. Ten minutes. Yeah, in a good way. <laughs> So I've been uh, running like crazy, and I think we're okay with that. Right we're, now. we're good. Eric's here to join us this evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. He's, he's having a glass. He's starting with bourbon. We yep. won't hold it yep. against That's him. That's okay. We're going to get him into some other stuff before the evening's over. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, how's it going, guys? Good? We're having a good uh, good week so far? Yeah. Weather's Everybody, good? Yeah. It's starting Spring's to get better. Spring's finally here, maybe? Wow. we more, got some uh, different things on here. So I'm drinking Glen Livid, Compass Box New York Blend, Hazelburn 9, um, French oak, uh, Abelor, uh, ooh, that's not Obernod. Yeah. Give that man an Isla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, yes. Tell X. I'm drinking. Is Lee on? Isla. All right. Uh, Lee is on. Somebody, uh, Lee G is on. Well, how many, you know, how many? So, you know, Drew knows what he's doing here. So I'm going to be flipping back and forth, trying to follow up who's doing what and how many people we have in line. And Drew makes it look things. easy. Yeah. It's it's totally not easy. <laughs> it's like juggling ten well, balls at the same time. Well, you time. went live last week. I mean, you went live... Uh, yeah, but I wasn't using the same stuff you guys were yeah. doing. We have 23 on right now, so that's good. There you go. So let's talk about the glimmer that we actually reviewed. Um, you want to try a little stuff? I will. For sure. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I actually started my evening off with this one, and to be honest, it's it's a very nice 
just light everyday drinking scotch. Yeah. And what's the price on this thing? Like, like 30, 30 bucks. It's yeah. Like 30 bucks so, I mean, really, for 30 bucks, I'm not ever going to feel bad about drinking it. Um, I think yep. that it's a, a smooth, easy dram. You know, Sweet. is it is it going to blow you away? No, I mean, I don't think you're no. going to lose your mind over it. But at the same time, I don't feel guilty for spending 30 bucks on it. And not I don't feel... Like it's a a bad glass to have around, honestly. I'm I'm kind of anxious to try the 15 and kind of compare the two. I mean, as you can see, we're we're kind of putting a little hurt on this bottle, uh, so it can't be all bad. And I, whatever score we give a bottle, I still kind of judge it by how hard we hit it. I mean, there are bottles that get saved a little bit just because they're good and they're special, and you know you're you're waiting for a special occasion to have them. And then there are bottles that are a little less expensive that don't get drank because they're just really not, not that good. great. <laughs> uh, but then there are bottles like this that it's you know it, it's a sweet, easy drinking glass. There's nothing wrong with it at all, and it's thirty bucks, so I don't mind pouring myself one. So, you know, it, is it a special occasion scotch? No, but it's something you can definitely have every day and, and feel pretty good about. Yeah. So, what'd you score this one? Uh, two <clears throat> something. I don't actually. I don't remember what the exact score was in the twos somewhere. Low yeah. twos. Oh, okay. So I mean, it, it wasn't horrible. Okay. Average scotch. Gotcha. So what at a think? good price. At a at a very reasonable price. I think it's I think it's okay. I'm this coming from a bourbon guy. Right. So you know, <laughs> e easy to drink. I think at least that first sip was. I mean, it's kind of. I was trying to see. Yeah, it had a good good uh, flavor. Sweet and fruity. Nice light space side. It is. So, what kind of a? I would say that's a for somebody that was beginner. That would probably be a good beginner. Yeah, nothing offensive or off-putting yeah, about it right. at all. So easy to drink. It's uh, not too high on the alcohol. You're you're looking at forty yeah. percent. So you know it's it's not going to give that awful uh, burn. alcohol burn right. or anything. And you know very approachable scotch. So what we got going on on the comments? So Tom R is. 2.25. We gave it a 2.25. Thanks for Tom, Tom Art. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still dealing with some technical difficulties here on trying to get the uh, counter. There's a there's a counter with a number of people that are supposed to be online up in the upper corner here, and I'm oh there it is. There's the thing you do. I think. Wow. We'll it's, all it's all good. It's all good. So, uh, so let's talk about Glen, Glen Murrah. I think well, Wine that? Light has the right idea. Same category as a monkey shoulder. I, exactly. I think that's a very good comparison. Yeah. I mean, that, that, um, you guys have told me that it's a good one to yeah, start with it's before. A, yeah, you're, you're looking at about 30 bucks, about the yeah. same price point, just an easy drinking every day. Yeah. And that's a blended malt and, and a good bottle to have around. I have no problems with that at all. And this was in sherry? Yep. Said. Yep. So, so, so Mike showed most of it. This has a little more sweetness to it, I think. Almost like a, not a sickly sweet, but that, that really... Uh, Sweet taste to it, whereas Monkey Shoulder, I think it's got more malt to it. It's a little bit, little, maybe a little better balanced, but. So I, many years is this one? It's an NAS, eight. so it's at least three. At least okay. three years old. In it. Okay. Now, I would say that the Monkey Shoulder, yeah, I agree. It's It's got a maltier, richer profile, I think. Yeah. So. I agree with that. Uh, while you guys are finishing that one up, I switched from that to this big bottle. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to be sad when that one is gone because uh, they apparently don't make those anymore. But uh, I'm a big fan of the cask strength peat monster. It's uh, <laughs> basically as perfect as you can get. <laughs> yeah, it for, is nice. For just, uh, you know, going and hitting it, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. So, 2.25 on the Glenmora. Um, I'm anxious to try the 15-year-old. I think that that's going to be interesting to, to put them head-to-head -head as well, I think. You think it'll be yeah. completely different? I, I think that, you know, they're, all of the Glenmoras that we've had are very, you know, it's a space side, so it's a, it's a lighter, fruitier, mm. new-make scotch. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see, since they've kind of redone some of their line, how that's going to, you know, if they've tried to get some richer flavors in there, okay. uh, especially in some of their older scotches. Right. So we'll see how that all pans out. But I would say that for an entry level for 30 bucks, it's worth not the money. I'm, no. I'm not upset about that one at all. So I'm anxious to try the 15. 
and uh, you know maybe the 18 as well. Uh, we may have to look around and pick that up, or maybe ask Andy. Um, I'm looking at you, Andy. I know you're going to watch this. Uh, if uh, yeah. maybe we could get a sample of the 50, or the 18 as well. Uh, yeah. But so far, I'm I'm very happy and pleased with the line. I think that it's it's a really good change up for him. So are we are we good on that one? I feel I, I feel like I've uh, said my piece on the Glenmore. Yeah, today. I apologize for not being more part of the conversation. I think I'm are just you going to have to let that. I think you're just going to let the counter go. Just don't worry about it. Yep. All right. It is what it is. So so Richie says the, the 18 is definitely so is Telex. Lots of people like the 18. You know what? And that is one thing about this distillery that I do like is it, it's all reasonably priced. I mean, they're not trying to stick it to you. I think that all of their scotches are very drinkable and very uh, reasonably priced. Yeah, they're not the... the Biggest, famous, most famous names, so they're not charging an arm and a leg to get right. the material out there. Yeah, but I mean, even, there's even some smaller, lesser known distilleries that, you know, kind of stick it to you yeah. when you, you know, they might have an entry level, but then they're, by the time you get up to a, an 18 year, they're still going to stick it to you, which, I mean, it sits in a cask for 18 years. I get yeah. it, but yeah. uh, these yeah, guys don't typically. Than that, so yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I, you know, I, I think that what they're doing is, is trying to make scotch a little more accessible for people, and uh, I, I appreciate that. And this is very accessible. So, it, you know, a lot of times people are scared off by scotch, and this is not that putrid, yeah, right. you know, powerful, potent. It's sweet. It's easy drinking. Yeah. I like everything about it. Speaking of stuff that I like, did you did you finish that? Did you try that sample? Just barely. All right. But I had to get into that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we we were uh, we were fortunate enough to have a bottle delivered today to my uh, my place of employment. I enjoy getting bottles at work. Can we uh, talk about it yet? I, I think we can talk about it. We're not gonna can you know, can't like disclose really, it. Like really go into it, but we can talk about what the deal is. So. Uh, we had a subscriber that was kind enough to send us a kind of congratulatory bottle um, yep. for our 3,000th subscriber, which should be coming up in, what, a week or so, give or take, give or take. if yeah, everything yeah, holds, holds true. So uh, Alan sent us this uh, awfully, awfully nice bottle. Uh, Farkless? 25. 25-year-old. Uh, now, I... No. Uh, to fully disclose, uh, it came to my work, and I may have opened it and had <laughs> just a small sample to see if it was worthy, because uh, I, I wasn't sure if it sitting in a barrel for 25 years would make it any good or not. Uh, turns out that it made it excellent, uh, <laughs> which is an awesome, awesome thing to have. It's good for them. Uh, yeah. But we'll be having this bottle in a couple of weeks um, to celebrate our 3,000 subscribers. So nice. I'm yeah. thinking that we'll probably do it on our live show and uh, you know, kind of give everybody a shout out. But yes. wanted to say a special thanks to Alan. Uh, I don't even know if he's on the, the show tonight or not yet, but uh, I did receive the bottle. Very much appreciated. Yep. Uh, I may or may not share it with. Uh, well, I got to share it with Andrew, I guess, because he knows it's here. But <laughs> you don't know it's here yet. So oh, Alan is on. <laughs> Alan's there. So yeah, Alan, it's. Uh, I had just like a little, like quarter of an ounce. <laughs> I just wanted to give it a little taste, and it's it's very very nice. That's so a huge head of dram with yeah, an eighth of an ounce. Yeah. Maybe a little more than that. <laughs> <laughs> not much. I mean, I poured. I I, I don't have Glen Carnes at work. I have brandy stuff. So, which is basically... Almost the same, but not quite as good. It, it was close enough. So, yeah, I had a little sip. That was kind of my... Uh, it's it's a little busy at my work this time of year, getting all the outside stuff over. Yeah, so, it is. painting, and I do a lot of... I wear a lot of hats yeah. uh, this time of year. Um, so, I'm, I'm a project engineer, yeah. and, uh, a construction worker, and a restaurant manager, and a teacher all at yeah. the same time. So you have to triple your staff for this time of year, right? It gets a little hectic. How, how, many, uh, how many people do you... Uh, we hire... Well, how, how much is it increase over the... We, uh, we double. We double, double our staff. Oh, so I, I hire... For just May or just in the spring, summer? Just uh, for summer session. So yeah. starting in March, we start our hiring, and okay. I'll hire about 100 people Yeah. Uh, in about a two-month span. And then I've got to train them all, and then I work them over the summer, and then and they, they all go back to their other jobs right. and careers and stuff. So uh, it's... 
that April May is yeah. is Hectic. a rough time of year. Uh, <laughs> once I get over, you know, once we get through race week, right, everything else smooth sailing. Yep. Uh, Mother's Day and race weekend. Yeah. Those are the two. So it's it's been a little busy at work. So I am enjoying a glass tonight because I totally deserve it. I hear what you're saying. Um, well, so Whis whiskey dick is on. Tamar is still here. Telex, Ellen. <clears throat> it's a good good crowd tonight. What did Alan say about the you just, about uh, the scotch? Uh, um, what did he say about it? He's up here. No, no. no. See, he hopes we enjoy it. And then he sampled it a week or so ago, and it's our favorite. Nicely oxidized for you guys. <laughs> just enough open? I, uh, I actually, when I, when I tasted it, uh, my first thought was that it needed to sit for about 45 minutes. Really? It, 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 I mean, it was good. But I think that the longer it sits and opens, it'll get even, even better. So, uh, okay. uh, it was it was fairly impressive. I'm I'm anxious to like really actually have a glass and really dig into it a little bit. Uh, it had a lot of complexity, and I mean it, it's an older Scotch, so it, it yeah. probably should. Yeah. So twenty five. Heck yeah! So I'm all about that. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I told Alan we're gonna have to plan a trip down to uh, Bourbon Country and yeah. we'll try to figure that out. You should come too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can be our guide. <laughs> so, what's this, what's this bourbon stuff we hear so much about? Yeah, right. <laughs> you and Mike. Uh, yeah. But I, yeah, I think Mike's... that it would be fun to go. Have you ever been? I have not. Not so been through should, the bourbon uh, trail. No. You've, I've, you've I've been done there a couple. Before. Yeah, I've been there. It's been a couple of days down there. I've been through it plenty of times, back and forth. Yeah. It's yes. a lot of fun. Yes, but. Tom, I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, so I did say that it, occasionally a scotch does get better with time in the glass. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to leave it there. It yeah. just means that it sometimes they open up. It doesn't last you know, very I long. can appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, so I, I was watching Twitter earlier. We have a Twitter feed with some of the other whiskey tubers, and I saw Bill from Whiskey Dick was editing video. He's going to release another video tomorrow. Maybe we can tell what, what you're sampling if you can. But, yeah, that's a pretty active group between... Uh, Whiskey, whiskey dick, malted, um, you know, all the group doing their, yep, doing their whiskey stuff. So it's good. Sometimes good just to kick back, do some video editing, throw up a live feed, and and talk. So doesn't hurt anything, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can just sometimes just not and just have a glass. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be one of those months. So we we are the other. What was it? Last night we were sitting here trying to organize the month of May, and then it's like. Uh, I think we have a time to do reviews here. Then we got live. We got somebody scheduled for that one. Somebody scheduled for that one. Somebody scheduled for that one. Bottles coming in. Bottles going out. You know. <laughs> it's it's busy. And you guys are doing a uh, a, a group tasting on uh, Sunday. You and Mark. Yes, yes. We're going to visit some some local guys. It, one of the it's it's actually a gentleman that we've met through several of the tasting the wine vine table, but he's got a whiskey group, and we've been invited up there. And we're going to go through, and he's got roughly twenty bottles, and we're going to go through and sample some. There's going to be some some experts, some novices there. We're going to have barbecue, brats, and nice. back and try some scotch and, and well other whiskey. So he's got he's going to have Asian whiskeys. He's going to have um, he's got some bourbons. Uh, yeah, uh, American whiskeys. I think he said Indian as well. Yeah, I like throw some. So of yeah, that, I think that would be interesting. Mm. The beauty um, of those Indian whiskeys is they age really fast. Yeah, because it's so hot, it just yeah. pushes that whiskey into that barrel. They're they're getting a little more prime. I think you would actually dig on some of them. Yeah. They're they're very bourbon esque. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. it, it's an even hotter climate than right. Kentucky, and they they age very quickly. Mm. Um, Definitely have some of them have a similar like flavor profile, so right. uh, they're doing some interesting stuff over there. Yeah, I just try to find it's, one. It's kind of a uh, we tried uh, Amrit at uh, the Whiskey Expo last year, and, oh, really? and uh, actually talked to the gentleman that imports it. And so are they was, on the shelves around here? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get them pretty much everywhere, and, and they're actually very reasonably reasonably priced. I was kind of happy to see that as well huh. so yeah so you guys should have a good time and then next uh wednesday we're meeting oh. up with uh dan, uh, dan for a uh glen Morangi art bag sampling sampling with uh, basically the entire high-end glen Morangi lineup going all the way from the original up to the signet yep a couple of um art bags the ano the Ugedale, maybe even the grooves if we're lucky 
Uh, he he did some, uh, mention something about that. Maybe maybe not there, but perhaps maybe he can have a little sample for us. Because uh, Mark has been hot on the trail of the grooves, but he wants the committee release. Yes. He wants the uh, higher proof version. And yeah. he has been unable to locate it, and it is driving him crazy. And Telex has already opened it, reviewed it online. <laughs> right. Like, Come on, guys, we want to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, we no, just, it Amber, yeah. and it was the Amber Fusion that I think we tested. We, yeah. We tried at the Whiskey Expo. That was a fusion. We're talking about the rye, and lots of people like that as well. Yeah. I, I really think that they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, everything that we tried from them was actually, I'd never had an Indian whiskey, and it was surprisingly good. Yeah. Um, especially the Fusion, because it was uh, partially peated, and I wasn't yeah, expecting that right. as well. So, mm. Yeah, and so they, they see, they, they, I think they distilled a, a fully peated and non-peated, and then blend them after the, I don't think they used partially peated grain. I think that was how they, they blended it after yeah. it had been distilled already. They get peated grain from Scotland, and they do half of it as peated and half of it as non-peated, and then blend them together oh, at, wow. the, at the end. So that whole it was, blending thing is it's an art and science, yeah. whatever. Seems would you so like it sounds little, like uh, what would you like, sir? I don't know yet. If you look at this, the online chat, it looks like everyone has had the grooves except us. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Nobody tell Mark. Yeah, I hope Mark's not online because that's not good. He uh, it, today's uh, his anniversary, so he's spending time with the wife tonight. Yep. We told him that that was probably okay. It's probably a wise idea. Because yeah. <laughs> if he wants to be married next year, he right. probably ought to be yeah. anniversary tonight. Yeah. He, he, there was a there was a period where he was kicking it around. <laughs> he was uh, on the fence as far as he didn't know. If, you just sneak over for a little. So bit. I might stop by. It's like really, because you know if you're over here for one minute, it's just as bad as you being over here all night. I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure that Mark's never just stopped by my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, hey, Sean, what's going on? Hey, do we have time for a drink? I've, I've seen him. I've seen him run in my garage and like borrow something, <laughs> but that's about it. Uh, I, anytime he's actually come in the house, you got to pet Molly, you got yeah, to yeah. say hi, and then you talk for you a little a bit, and all of a sudden it's, you know, a half hour later, and then you should probably just have a glass of scotch while yep. you're here. Yep. Just one. That's true. We actually just had one last night. We did. Everybody we just had, had one. Which you is, all had to go to work or something the next day. Eh, it's all right. I actually don't have to go to work tomorrow. That's so, nice. Tom R., you, did, you are right that we did have a bottle of 20-something that not everyone else had had, which was... Really nice as well. So we didn't have the grooves, well, but we had the twenty something. So that's true. Thanks a ton. Yeah, <laughs> and that was yeah, that was definitely worth having. So, yeah. but that doesn't mean we don't want the grooves. <laughs> so I see yeah, Bobby's on. Is Bobby's no? Who's the uh, the chat boss tonight? Still is it? Look at KB still the chat boss. He's running the running the show from the bottom of the screen. Uh, you gotta get some of your friends to sign up. <laughs> come out, come out. That's how that works. Uh, so I, uh, I'm anxious to sample some of the Ardbegs because it's been a long time since I've had the Ugadale, and we haven't had a bottle on the bar in a long time. Ugadale, so I'm, no, yeah. I'm anxious to uh, to sample a little bit. We we had some of the uh, on O the other day, and it was. It was really nice. Uh, yeah, it was surprisingly good. Uh, if you like peated stuff, it's it's a little maybe not for a bourbon yeah. guy. It's a, it's it, a it softest a little, peated you could get. It might be a little oh. heavy for you. There but goes the, Bobby uh, trying to get that. There you go. Uh, but we had uh, we actually had a good time trying the Anno, and I'm I'm anxious to try the Ugadale up against it because yeah. it's been a long time since I had it, and I. I have a vivid memory of opening that <laughs> bottle here. It's really strong. It was the one bottle that Mark was so proud when he brought it down. Uh, it was our first bottle of Ardbeg. He was all excited that he bought it. <laughs> it came down the stairs, and he's like, guys, look what I got. And uh, this was before we were doing videos or anything. Yeah. And he opened the bottle, and we popped the cork off, and all four of us were like, what, what? is this? <laughs> like, there is do that? no way we can drink this. Like, we all had it, so we all got a glass because we're like, there's no way it tastes like it smells, right? Right. Totally tastes like it smells. Yeah. Really? Even more so. And we uh, were like, we need to put this aside. Yeah, so we put it on the Bad. shelf. And it was, it was yeah. so smoky and so potent. Oh, okay. And we weren't peaty heads yet. And, oh, gotcha. And so we didn't, we really didn't think no. that we were ever going to finish that bottle. I really no. thought it would just sit on the shelf forever. 
And so it, it did sit on the bar for quite a while. And for some reason, we took it with us on a fishing trip. Mm -hmm. And Mark and I had a probably what you guys would call several too many. Uh, <laughs> several bottles too many. Yeah. Yeah. We sat by a fire to like three or four in the morning. Just kept throwing logs on. And, and drank a lot the, of scotch. The rest of us all got to bed like hours ago. <laughs> but, we, like, I'll get we drank a lot of scotch, and we smoked cigars, and what we discovered was, if you smoke a cigar with a Ugadale, it brings out all the sweet notes that we couldn't get to before. Mm -hmm. And ever since that day, we've been all about it. So then the following day, two things happened. One, Mark and I got out of bed after we had like two hours of sleep, and everybody thought we were going to die. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and they were like, all right, let's go. Like, get on the boat, start fishing. Uh, and we went all day, but we got to the end of the night, and everybody's sitting around the campfire again, and we're like, you guys got to try this with a cigar. And sure enough, they were, we were sold. pleasantly surprised wow. as well, because you smoke the cigar, and then yeah. all the, the cigar smoke kind of the... counteracts the, the peat smoke, and you yeah, got to smoke. all the sweet stuff underneath, and it was awesome. So, yeah, ever since that day, we, we've had a ball with it. Well, and once nice. you um, once you've tasted it and you pull those flavors out, you can get it later without the cigar. Yeah. Oh. Then you can say, "Oh, yeah, I know what's in there," so you can search for it easier. Yeah. So it, it didn't get knocked in the head. I, I can say hmm. that that whole process, that particular bottle, was one of those aha moments for for me, and I think for all yeah, of you all guys of us, yeah. in Scotch was just completely unexpected. We didn't even like Mark and I. Trust me, we're not trying to discover the joys of scotch. We yeah. were, we had discovered the joys of scotch, but not from a flavor profile <laughs> perspective. Uh, how long until Mike opens his poor man's pappy? You know what? That is an excellent question because it's probably been, uh, a couple of weeks. It, it's been a month? at least a month, probably six weeks. We're probably getting close. Uh, Mike's funny about that stuff. Because I'm sure he's got a counter somewhere in his house that he's he's got a date in mind when is the minimum date required That's for him funny. to leave it sit. And so I'm going to have to actually talk to him because I'm actually kind of curious to try it, to be honest with you. I'm not sure he'll let us try it. He'll let you try it. And maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed when we were out of town fishing, he brought over the, the new bottle of Booker's and like we didn't even know he had it. <laughs> I <laughs> I don't blame you. I mean, that's I a special will, bottle. I will say that that was actually a fun night because <laughs> the bottle of Booker's that I had was an old, old bottle. bottle of Booker's. And, and I'd had it forever before I even opened it because I just wasn't, I didn't want to open that bottle. And when I finally opened it, it was just because it's such a high proof. It's not something that you pull right. down every yeah. day. And so I finally, uh, we whittled it down to the bottom and when Mike brought his new bottle over, we opened that one and we finished off mine. And you could tell that that, that bottle, mine still had, you could tell that they were the same whiskey, but mine had oxidized oh. and you could tell that it just didn't have like Turned that bright, fresh bit. flavor. Right, yeah. Whereas, you know, when Mike poured his in the glass, you could, it popped. Hmm. Um, and it was, it was very good. Um, nice. But I, I do enjoy Booker's, but I just... That's one you've got to be in the mood for. Yeah. There's there's a few whiskeys like that. Um, that uh, <laughs> the, the Aberlour uh, is another one. The, you you have to be in the mood for it. It's really high proof, and and for some reason that one always gives me a hangover. Yeah. Even if it's the, uh, the it, Booker's. You know, no. Uh, Booker's I can drink all uh, night, but that Aberlour uh, just is like a punch in the teeth. I don't know. Uh, but Booker's is, you know, I, I think it's got a, a decent flavor profile, but it's it's really high proof, and yeah. so you got to be in the mood for it. But that was a fun night. Yeah. Ooh, blends. So what we're like talking that. here. Um, so I know there's been some discussion. Our Big Ten, yeah, don't bet, don't bash our Big Ten. That, that is a great entry entry deed. I like our Big Ten as well. Dark Cove, we had the Dark Cove committee release. It is. Fantastic. Yeah, that's that was one of my good. favorite scotches. That's definitely my wheelhouse. <laughs> Don't mind if you do, huh? Mm -hmm. That's twenty-five. 
Oh, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> it's good. good it's it? good and malty and just smooth. Yeah, I like yeah. everything about that glass. It's really, really, really good. <laughs> Booker's will make you stupid real fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not careful with it. Here's the thing about Booker's, though. It's it's such a high proof that it really is a sip and whiskey because you can't really drink a whole bunch of it. You know, I mean, if you try and shoot a bunch of Booker's, kill yourself. That's not a good idea you know, for one thing. <laughs> but it's such a strong whiskey that you just really don't want to do that. I mean, I I would probably get drunk faster on a lower proof whiskey <laughs> just because I could drink because you're going to drink more of it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. This cast strength peat monster is at it's high. 57. And, I mean, it's it's kind of slowing me down a little bit, but that Booker's just, I mean, you it's add... Like 63 or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, it's, it's high. <laughs> I mean, it's really, <laughs> like really high. Yeah. But it's been barrel aged. So, but yeah, the Ardbeg 10, I think, is a classic. Um, I like it as far as an entry level goes better than the Laphroaig. Yes, I think it's got better depth of flavor. Lafroy is so potent, so charcoal. Yeah, it's it's almost a little over the top, almost. Uh, <laughs> so Tom Mars says, my first bottle of Ardbeg 10 smelled like Friday night at the drag strip <laughs> and old school Band-Aids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, for six months, yeah. Yeah. It does, so it's got that iodine smell. Really? Yeah. yeah. What? Where's the... So the, 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 oh no, that's not near this. Yeah, this one's like training wheels. Because it's 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 got the same flavor, but it's like uh, it's, it's, it's part of it's done in a sherry cask. So it's got it, it, a sweet the edge on. a sweet yep. component to it. Alright, so and what it's do actually I drink? pretty nice. Who, who wants something? Well, I want something. something. What would you like, sir? Uh something I guess similar to this. Let's see what I can Maybe do how about, try this. Okay. What do you got? Wolf the Aurora. Yeah. See, I want to try that. What would it do? I know. <coughs> you know what we could do? We could open that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's slapping this, on hand. This is what happens when, usually there's somebody here to tell me no. <laughs> I'm too busy working out this. <laughs> I know. And that works out great for We me. don't know what you open. Oh, KB took it back. Oh. <laughs> he will not relinquish. Nothing wrong with that. Good for oh. you, sir. I'm going to have a little splash, too, because I'm a, I'm a big fan of the wolf burn. Yeah. I just, I'm jealous that Mark got a stiller. If you guys have not seen uh, Mark's interview with Shane from Wolfburn. You really should go back and watch it. Um, you know what's it's so hilarious about that? So they're distilling 120,000 liters of alcohol per year. They have three employees. Really? Three. And they just went up to three because I think they're starting to sell and market now. Yeah. Because the first few years they had two people working. 120,000 liters a year, two people. Shane and somebody else. Distilling, <laughs> barreling, cleaning the floors. All of it. Stirring malt, dumping, I mean, bottling everything. They did it all, right? Scooping out the beer tanks. I mean, everything. He did those three two guys. people. Or two. Those two people did all that for three years until he got the third person to help do some of the marketing stuff. Yeah, that's wow. really cool. But I, I'm I'm very appreciative of their product. I, I I enjoy their scotch. So what's the difference there? The three. So this one is just done in a sherry cask. Okay. All right. And then they've got, uh, this is actually uh, the one that we started off with, um, which is, it's got a name now, doesn't it? I don't think it's on the on our box. But it does have a name now, and I don't remember what it is. But anyway, this one is finished in um, uh, Lefroy cast, right? Yeah, Lefroy. So they finish off in Lafroy, so it's it gets like a little peat from okay. the from the whiskey it's, that was in it before, yeah. right? And then the Morvin is their lightly peated, okay. so they actually peat the malt and then okay. make the whiskey. So that's got so, more peat than the. Supposedly, yeah, we actually haven't opened this one oh, yet, really? so that's going to be our 
on our list to review. So I know Mark talked to him. Actually, it was a fun interview just because you don't often get to talk to somebody who's so involved in every aspect of the scotch that they make. Um, so I think that was what made that interview really interesting for me was that he was involved from really the ground floor. So yeah, you know, he even, was literally he even, helped uh, design and build the stuff. Yeah, I mean, hmm. yeah. So even you know, master distillers at, at famous distilleries don't usually get to be involved in a project like that where you can you know talk about the still shape and how you want the actual whiskey to come out tasting. Do you want it oily? Do you want it really light? You know, do you want a, a, a sweet fruity scotch? You're looking for something more heavy. You know, what kind of mash bill are you yeah, using? Yeah, that's I mean, special. They, you know, so he was able to really be involved from the from the ground floor in, in what this scotch was going to become. Hmm. And it's a label that didn't have a predecessor. So whatever he made it, that was it. 100 years from now, they're going to talk about the it, scotch that he designed yeah. because that was his. That's so awesome. how, how many people in history have had a chance to do something like that? See, that's the key. Well, that's so cool. if, if you're a distiller, somebody like McAllen, number one, if you become master distiller, they're they're distilling like two million liters a year or something like that. It's just some insane amount, and so you're not on the floor. I mean, you've got to be just doing some spe some specialty work, and you've got to match the McAllen flavor. It's not your scotch, right? It's you are you've got to meet McAllen's, right? That Wolfburn stuff is his, yeah, and it's good. I like it. It's good. So I'm. Um, you know, it, I think that's what made it so interesting. Plus the fact that the guy is just a very down-to-earth guy. He's the kind of guy that you pull up at the bar and have a drink with. Not pretentious at all. No. Just a really nice, nice That's individual. the other thing. So, you know, I work in manufacturing, and we have certain trade secrets and everything. But he was like, yeah, no, we, we, we distill. We, we take the first cut at 100 and some percent, alcohol, you know, at certain temperatures. We, we do the back cut at 20, uh, this. I mean, he was giving the details on how he makes his scotch. They do the same thing every day, so it's almost like, it's almost rote. So the scotch coming out is the same every day to make a consistent product. And then they can do some caskings to kind of adjust the flavor a little bit, but he was not shy about telling them how they do things. Hmm. That, that was really cool. That's what you're seeing. <laughs> so apparently, oh. Whoa, whoa, holy cow, he might Thanks, have... Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Bob H., I think he may take the uh, bot back. Uh, oh, he did it! Really, oh. really close. <laughs> KB had already gone in and taken it out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, well, we appreciate Bob, you anyway. Yeah, thanks, Bob. That's I huge. Mean, that, yeah, let's, so what has Bob been talking about? Um, I got I got. For what he's been talking about. Um, so we have questions about heat and the hedonism, and we haven't had hedonism, that I remember. Uh, uh, we, we had did. it at one of the tastings. We did have it at a tasting. We haven't done a review on it. Um, we actually, from what I remember, it was pretty good. Uh, but I don't remember. Because it's a blend. Or no, it's a grain, if I remember right. Yeah. It is a grain, and not, not a malt. But I don't. We haven't reviewed it. No. Um, we, we actually we talked about it. buying a bottle of it, and we. I think that was actually the night that we ended up with the Beanston Twenty. <laughs> 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 and a, and a, a couple other bottles, because somebody turned Mark and I loose in a liquor store with, <laughs> with, <laughs> with a credit card with, with our bank account state. open and said, "Why don't you guys go pick out something?" I mean, that's yeah. awesome for us. I, 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 you guys don't really complain. No, because you guys pick good stuff. We trust you guys pick good stuff. That's why you have your own car, because we, you know, we trust you. Um, so, Bobby, I have to agree with Bobby. Um, he, he was talking about how good the interview with Wolfburn was. Fabulous show with tons of good and info for nerds like me. And that's why I enjoyed I wish I'd been there to, to do that. We were yeah. out of town or doing something. Yeah. I wasn't able to be there with that. But, yeah, I absolutely would have. The, the manufacturing nerd in me just, like, let me tell me how you I, make that. Sense. I really think we probably have to have him back on again. I do too. He was just a really is he local. No, he, no, he, he was, was in Scout. He, he okay. was calling from Wolfburn, so we had to earlier in the day. Oh, so the live was like at four o'clock. Yeah, that was the problem. The live was like at four o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, so he he could do it. No, it was earlier than that because he was like doing it right after work. Oh. Yeah, it may have been one one thirty something. Like yeah. That. Huh. So it was, it was during the week. I couldn't get couldn't get off. So 
Yeah, that was. It, it was one of those things where we were really geeked and excited yeah. to have him on the show, That's and awesome. he was really geeked and excited to be on the show. Like his wife was, uh, mess, you know, sending out. Uh, she shared our Facebook link that he was going to be on. And, yeah, you know, I mean, which is cool. We made books from the U.S. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. Cool. But it was it was a lot of fun, and and it was interesting to talk to him because, again, he was just a really cool guy and had a ton of knowledge. But he wasn't like some people you run into, and they're very pretentious about sure, it. Sure, right. And right. this guy was like, you know, it was it, that was his job. You know, he That's was just awesome. going into work every day. He just happened to be doing something that we all wish we could do for a living. Cool. You know, right. yeah, so. Exactly. But I think that it's one of those things that uh, you know, it, be careful what you wish for, because every job seems glamorous until you have to do it, and there's a reason well, they call it mind. work. And, so and keep in mind, there's two people. <laughs> Distilling and scrubbing toilets and scrubbing doors sure. and, and floors. Well, and, I mean, you know, you watch you the Food Network, being a chef looks glamorous. Let me tell you, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if you've ever seen a fermenter after when it's done and the sludge that's in a fermenter, then you've taken out all the nice liquid right. and stuff and all that grain and dead yeast and yeah. stuff that's in there that you gotta you got to polish all that and then you got to sanitize it, and depending on how big the fermenters are. Right. Where do I sign up? <laughs> Plus, you're living as far north in Scotland as you possibly can, because he's way up at the very top edge of. I mean, he's like literally, see, the very top of we'll Scotland. Yeah. So that's gonna be I, cold. It's gonna be windy. It's gonna be rainy. Rainy. Yeah, I would be good with all. All the time. I could sit inside by the yeah. fireplace and read a book. I'd be fine. By My family. Fire. Not peat so fire. Much. Yeah. By a peat fire. Heck yeah. <laughs> you go out and dig your peat With Scott, in the morning. Try your side. Heck yeah. And yep. that's just for breakfast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, KB. Dirty job, sign me up. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I mean... Uh, no way. No way. Come on now. I... I think I'd get tired of it, but I think it'd be fun to do for like a week or two just to go in and work the distillery and see what it would be like. You know, there are some Scotch distillers that, that you can do that. Yeah. That you can go and, and be a, a floor technician for a week. Really? You, and you show up and they'll put you up in a hotel and you can do that. That'd be really interesting, I think. You don't have to put me up in a hotel. I'll sleep on the floor. Sleep on the <laughs> sleep in a cot. I'll, I'll right sleep on in the... a pile of dry malt. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll sleep in, in the warehouse next to the barrels so they can breathe with me. It'll be awesome. <laughs> pile probably, probably pile a little, of pee. Uh, well, and if you lay on a barrel, that'll warm it up so it'll have a whole different profile. It'll be Sean's barrel. Sean's yeah, barrel. Because I'm going to stick it in my coat on the way out. <laughs> 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 Got to bring the big coat for that. <laughs> <laughs> no good to see here. <laughs> I, but we definitely should plan a trip down to the Bourbon Trail. I think that would be a lot of fun. And a little closer than Scotland, but... <laughs> and much they, more affordable. Yeah. But there, <laughs> you, you know, a lot of... It, oh, it's yeah. all whiskey. You know, the process of right. making whiskey and, and aging whiskey is the same no matter where you go. So, so that was a funny thing. So we... My, my wife and I went down there. And we, we toured four or five distilleries. And when the industry was like... So they all do the same thing to make whiskey. Well, yes, they technically do all the same things, but they use different yeasts. And recipes different, are different. The yeah, recipes I are mean, different, absolutely. Well, and even the, the, the shape of the stills, like there's so many different things that come into play to make a whiskey unique. And Tom Arsh, sign me up. But, but you know what I have to say? <laughs> it was pretty cool when we, we did the, a special tour at Maker's Mark. <clears throat> and where you're staying by the still, is currently distilling, they, they go to the distill, take a tin cup on a scoop, dip it into the condenser off the still, and pass it around. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, about. like, that is new make. As new make as you can possibly wow. get. So that, just passes That's of, why I oh. couldn't work at a distillery right there. Spirit <laughs> safe, what? Yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. What, what do you mean I'm not supposed to drink this right out of That's when it's the best, right? You in cast two? I there think so. I, There's something to review those. I know. <laughs> we should probably get on that because I'm going to drink them. All right. All right. Just a little just a little tug on that. You may actually like this one. Yeah. So, Tom, we, we talked about going to Scotland, but we our plan was to open a distillery and, and then maybe have a pub attached to the distillery. Actually, we were uh, last night we were talking about having a uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society partner bar. I'd love to do that. But do it right. No. This guy has restaurant experience. No, right. no BS. So, I, uh, <laughs> I'm i going to demand perfection from my staff. 
you're going to have to know at least as much about whiskey as I know. Uh, and I'm a dummy, but uh, I'm you're not that much. You're going to have to pay him well for that, though. Well, that's what tips are for. Uh, if you know your stuff, you're going to get paid. That's right. Because <laughs> yep. you're going to be selling good bottle, and you're going to be like really selling all these good scotches. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. People Come like on, that Tom. kind of stuff. Let's do it. Yeah, no. Well, that's the thing. So there, this um, whiskey group that we're going to uh, going to on Sunday, they're a bunch of guys that get together and drink whiskey, and that's, that's essentially what we are. I mean, we're our own whiskey club here. Um, we just happen to go on YouTube and talk. You know what, Everwind? I've actually seen something about that train, and I thought that that would be like heaven. Hmm. So you get on the train, and it just takes you around, and you get off at. I mean, I'll go to Isla. <laughs> it'll take you to the ferry. I'll drop you off. But <laughs> it, go it, across it, but it goes, you know, through the countryside, and you get yeah. to see Scotland, and you know, it stops in a lot of the the villages, and you get to get out and and go actually to the distilleries and sample the whiskey. Mm. Not to worry about driving anywhere. Right. You know, that's and, a cool it's, idea. It's actually it a pretty cool deal. So yeah. I think I could get behind that. Um, maybe we should get a uh, a group rate going on that one. I would totally take the train. I haven't been on a train in a long time. No, they're fun. Heck yeah, they are. I took the train when I was in, uh, last time was when I was in college. I, uh, I took the train up to Michigan. And it was, it was actually very pleasant. Yeah. I well, but, and before you moved to the neighborhood, uh, the, uh, um, Mark, Mark's family and our family took the train to Chicago. Mm. So we, we stayed at um, Mark's wife's family one night, and then got on the train that morning. We took it up to Chicago, um, did Chicago for a couple of days, took the train back, and so it was, yeah, it was fun. Relaxing way up there. Yeah. Oh, is somebody else drinking the uh, Mac Edition too? The Royal Scotch. Is KB drinking that? Oh, Bob is. Oh, what? what? No, Bob's telling KB to do that. Somebody should. I'm thinking about doing that Buchanan 18, get rid of that. Somebody should get rid of that. Because you all love that. So you all love that bottle. Here's the problem with the Buchanan. <laughs> KB, nice work, sir. I actually, uh, I like the McAllen edition, too. It's not bad. People on the train, educating people about the distillers and giving samples. That's what we're for. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that would be awesome. They could pay us they to could. educate on the train. Yes. Or they could just give it to us for free. You can do special appearances Scotland. once a month. I can, I can handle that. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that over here. <laughs> shake it. It won't come out if you don't shake it. <laughs> That's the reason I did that because I love this bottle, and everybody mocks it, and it's really kind of funny. The scotch is okay too. I mean, it's a it's a blend, but it's eight, but it's 18 years old. Better than older than that. that uh, All right, KB no, says that train is fun, so I think that. I'm definitely going to take your word it for it, fun. sir. I think so it sounds KB's awesome. Where, I, I got to know more about KB. I mean, he's he's the, been the the super chat boss like for three weeks straight. He's been to Scotland and done the train. I mean, man, Drew's sitting in a parking lot. <laughs> Hi, Drew Bills. Uh, are you uh, in a movie park? Oh, he's going uh, to. Who's uh, here? Are you, are you to done it. with the oh, movie? Oh, is he going to Avengers? Yes, the new one, right? Sorry. That's where Mike's at tonight too. Oh, really? Yep. I'm going tomorrow. I'm taking the kids out of school. <laughs> That's smart. Caleb wants to go really bad. He's supposed yeah. to be going with a birthday party group, but I said, did they pre-buy all tickets? And he's like, I don't know. And I heard it's sold out everywhere. I got my tickets three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, see? But you take five people, you got to you gotta buy early. Right. You know that. you got a big family. Yeah. you, you got to go really early or you... Uh... Yeah. There's a little bit of smoke in that 18. I think it was just scotch left in the glass, maybe. Maybe, maybe it got uh, when Tom, a little smoky from the extra friction coming out of the pour. <laughs> Tom, Tom dares me to pull up the, the dimple pinch. Yeah, no, I don't think tonight. <laughs> Did I, we have a? Was that were we live when I when I had that out and we I drank some of it and couldn't couldn't finish it? I don't think What's so. What's wrong with it? Just it's just not good. <laughs> it's, it's an inexpensive There's scotch. I mean, it, it is. It's not. It's not top of the shelf. I mean, that, yeah. That's clear. But I was drinking it the other night, and it just I poured a little, and I just couldn't. 
it's very rare that I cannot finish a glass of whiskey. At that time, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. So we haven't reviewed it yet. Uh, it's not on our. There, there are two bottles back there waiting to be reviewed that nobody that, wants that, to review. Yeah. <laughs> well, people want us to review, but we don't want to review. There, I gotcha. I'm actually one of them was a gift uh, from a distributor and. I was, I actually was kind of excited to get it when I was uh, gifted with it, and I opened it up because I wanted to try it because I hadn't had anything by this particular distillery, and was deeply saddened by the bottle uh, mm-hmm. as soon as I took a sip, and I went back to it a few weeks later thinking that maybe it was maybe just it that is. night, right. like maybe I was just having an off night, right, yeah. something right. that was just on like your palate, yeah. it just wasn't. No, no, it wasn't <laughs> no. that. It's so uh, I, yeah, I, or at least the the flavor profile doesn't fit with what I enjoy about gotcha. drinking whiskey. So I think that that one's maybe. No, I'm not gonna tell you, tell us. <laughs> but it is sitting behind my bar somewhere, and eventually we will get to it. But we have a few others to review because we have a lot of guests coming up. We do. So we do have a lot of guests. Actually, we've got five minutes left, so we ought to talk about that. Actually, before we get to that, Telex. Why don't you talk to us about uh, what you got on your show tonight, sir? Yeah, we didn't do Scotch in the News at all on ID either, either, did we? Well, we don't have time for that. So We are Scotch in the News. Scotch in the News. So the other thing I want to talk through is uh, KB and Bob H. apparently hang out a lot, so I need to know what city they're in. <laughs> so um, you don't have to tell us. Oh, he's exactly. going for the Highland Games. I'd love to go for the Highland Games. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> couple of rums. Mm. Oh, that you don't want to have, yeah. Yeah. Do they have the funk? Because I know... Uh, the Ron to Jeremy? That doesn't have the funk. <laughs> there's there's a few out there that have the uh, the funk. The old Ron yeah. funk? Uh. Ooh. You had me at Glendronic, Telex. No, Bo- Bo- <laughs> Bo- 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 Oh, yeah. If I can. I think that sounds like a lovely show. Yeah, nasty funk. You're right. I've had a couple of rums like that, and it's deeply disappointing. It's like sour bananas. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. But you know what's funny? There are people that are like super into rums, and yeah. that's what they look for. Really? Yeah. I am not a. Rum. Maybe it's like. Uh, it's just too sweet. Maybe it's like smoky scotches. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Could be. You know what I mean? Like an acquired taste, and once you maybe. get hooked on it, that's your thing. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's like the like coffee that is. Been through the digestive tract of a cat. What is that? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the beans do. The, the be- yeah, the, the cats eat the beans, and then they then people go and collect the the feces of the of the cat and take the beans out and roast You're them. You're kidding? No, I'm mm-hmm. serious. That, it's like the most expensive coffee in the world. Kupabura yeah. or I forget what it's yeah, I've sure. never had it. I gotta draw the line somewhere, guys. Right. I, uh, I don't need poop. I, poop and coffee, I've poop I've coffee. eaten I've eaten some weird stuff, but. Uh, you gotta draw the line somewhere. I tried a nitro coffee this weekend. A nitro coffee? What's yeah. that? Yeah, they run nitrogen through it, and it comes out like a Guinness beer. I've seen that. That seems weird. Yeah. Was it Is good? It, it was okay. It, it was out in awesome. Seattle, so the oh, Starbucks wow. out there was promoting it. It was it was okay. I just couldn't. I don't know. Seattle, Vietnamese weasel coffee. No, <laughs> that that's it right there. Kopi Luak, yeah. Yep. Uh, 100 to $500 a pound. No thanks. Kopi Luak coffee. That's, I'll tell you what, that's a lot of work to get your coffee. <laughs> there, must be a, there must be a lot of those cats running around <laughs> to find enough to make a pound of coffee. Out. I think that, I, so what does it do that, you know what, never mind. Never mind. It's out of the Let's scotch realm. To the, yeah. <laughs> Like Bob says, pass on anything, anything coffee. What, what's he making happen for a two thousand dollars PayPal payment? I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's trying to get the. Uh, so Telex is planning Bobor, a Glenlossy, and Glendornock if he can manage himself through a third bottle in one one hour. So uh, apparently, uh, you got this, Telex. Dude, Telex for a two K PayPal. Yeah, <laughs> four bottles. <laughs> okay, how many do you need? <laughs> They eat the cats. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so it's a twofer. 
Yeah. You get your uh, your dinner and your <laughs> after meal coffee, right? Uh, I'm, see, now I'm suddenly okay with all of that. Yeah. I watched Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom the other day. So oh. When they do the snake. Yeah. When the bee bra- and the brains. The monkey yeah. Brain. brains. Yeah. I remember as a and kid watching that movie yeah. and it was just like, yeah, I could have done without that whole meal part. Like the rest of the movie, pulling the dude's heart out, no problem, but... I don't need right. I don't need snakes crawling towards and me. And the big the beetles tent, really man. pull the top off the beetle and eat the right, right, out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, man, whatever. Don't ask for the soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's way too much screaming in that movie, though. Yeah, there's a lot. Of that screaming. one. That was probably well yeah. before Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out. That was my least favorite in the engine. <laughs> and then that mm, steaming pile came out. Speaking of stuff, the pastor a cat. Uh, we have two minutes left. So we got two minutes left. Uh, like we said, we got a big week coming up. You guys are going to the private scotch <laughs> tasting, but Wednesday we'll probably go live uh, from we our Glamorangi hard bag tasting, and yeah. maybe we'll get Dan on there to kind of talk about what they have coming up. Yeah, because they're expecting um, about 100 people at that tasting, so yep. it's going to be a big one. Thursday, uh, I forget which review we've got coming up on Monday, but. I know we've got something coming up. We've got uh, Andy from Glen Murrow should be coming up pretty soon. We've got uh, Ben coming back on to talk about the new Jura lineup. Yes, the, uh, the brand new, newly released Jura lineup where you got a couple bottles here to talk through. We've got when we've got another uh, thing from Dalmore coming up mm-hmm. uh, shortly thereafter. So we've we've got actually quite a few things coming in the lineup pretty quick. Yep. Uh, so we're looking forward more, to a more lot Glen of cool stuff. discussion. Yep, later this. Uh, later in May, I think. Yeah. So, we got a lot of good stuff coming on. I want crab cakes from Sean's Restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> so you do. do. I. They are <laughs> yeah, you do. Crazy good. So, uh, and if you are uh, around next Sunday, or next Saturday, we were, we'll probably go live from the Crawfish Boil. We have our annual yeah, Crawfish Boil right. next week. So, you'll probably see Eric there. You'll probably see a lot of familiar faces uh, that have <laughs> been on the show. Eating a lot the, of good food. Yeah, oh. we, we're going to do it up. So. Yep. Everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to tune into Telex after this. Right, Sounds okay. like he's going to have some good stuff going on. So you guys keep talking because it may take you a minute to shut this down. <laughs> All right. Um, See, he's just not Drew. I'm not Drew. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you, watching Drew is just... It's a work of art. It's like yeah. a fine art. Yeah, It is a yeah, fine art. He, it's very good. Smooth. There are things that I can do, and that's just not one of them. You know? Yep. It's like he juggles stuff, and... It, it makes it look amazing. It makes it look easy. It's not easy. Nope. Right. So, all right. All right, so much, guys. Thank you. Have a good e- good evening. Good evening.